there has been a lot of interest in the last video I made on this neck profiling jig. And since I'm getting ready to copy and reproduce a Fender Jazz bass neck, and it won't fit in this jig, I'm going to make a whole new one. So follow along. So the reason I'm going to copy the profile of this neck, because a friend of mine brought over this Epiphone Thunderbird as a bolt-on neck, and he doesn't like how wide it is here. He much prefers the feel of a jazz neck. So I'm going to make one for this Thunderbird base, make it look like it belongs with the right headstock, but it's going to have the jazz profile. The scale length of both of these guitar necks is 34. This one is an inch and a half wide at the nut. This one is an inch and three quarter. The length of a regular guitar neck, right at 26. The length of this jazz neck is 33 and a quarter. And obviously it won't fit inside this jig. I need about three inches on each end more than the neck. So whatever the neck is, I am going to add six inches. I'm going to say 33 and a half. So I'm going to go 39 and a half for this entire thing. So before I build this inner part, I'm going to start with the outer part. And I'm going to make the dimensions for the one for the bass the same as this one for the guitar. So the width of this is eight inches and the height of it is nine. It's got a half inch wide groove in it that goes up to five and a half inches high. And the middle of the bearing is at six and a half inches. The height of the side rails is six and a half inches. So here's the two ends for the new jig I'm making for base necks. Now I'm going to mount my bearing before I do anything else on the bottom of it and mark where the bottom goes and drill a hole for this pencil lid right there. And this is a 564th hole will will fit that pencil lid. I've established the center and bottom of the bearing and I've center punched it, so I'm gonna drill the hole. I've drilled the hole that's at the bottom of the bearing. I've got the pencil lead so that it is a very tight tolerance, fits into that hole. I want it to come out nice and square, so I've clamped it onto the square corner of this board and clamped it so everything was square and at right angles. Okay, the main frame of the profiling jig is ready to go. The sled I made for the first one still fits in this one, so we're good to go. Making the carriage for the neck profiler, I am going to cut grooves where all the frets are. So I'm marking it out, and I want to cut saw cuts all the way through there. Before I did any cutting on this, I established the center line down the middle. I've got my blade set for an eighth of an inch depth, and I'm going to saw the nut and all the frets. I 
all the grooves for the frets are cut and it fits in there face down with the fretboard against the carriage. Even the Explorer neck fits on there just right. At the nut, I'm going to measure a well, three quarter on each side of the center line for an inch and a half width. And I'm going to mark that. I'm going to go down here to the other end. The width of the neck at this fret is two and a half. Inch and a quarter on each side. Two and a half. Lay that on there and mark it. We're going to narrow it down on the bandsaw to be less width than the guitar neck. I'm adding a stiffener down the back of the MDF so that it won't go crooked. I've made a block for the end of the neck carriage that has the axis a quarter an inch up from the middle, and that's a half inch hole. Here's my puck blanks, ready to go. One for the head. There's the center hole. It's going to be a half inch. These little holes are two inches. They have to be closer together on the head side than on the body side because it was getting into the screws when I tried to do it the first time. One and three eighths from the middle, half inch hole. I've chose to use half inch dowel rod as my axis. I'm using drywall screws and the holes are countersunk. Mounting the blank puck onto the end of the neck cradle. I found the center line on the heel and marked it. When I mount this, I've got a center line I can match it to on the jig. Put a couple pieces of metal on the side to protect the finish. And I have adjusting screws here to get it centered. And then a plate to lock it down in place. On the opposite end here, I find the center. Make sure it's lined up and lock it down. On the head end, I've made a spacer to take up the offset of the headstock. Fastened it down with the, some washers and some screws. You can see that the neck is mounted in there and the frets are in those slots. At this end of the neck, I take a measurement to make sure it's square. So now we're ready to put the rotating part of the neck assembly into the main frame here. We'll want to make sure that the rotating carriage rotates freely without any binds. Eliminate them before you go any farther. So this is my router base that I've put together. It fits in between these rails and can slide back and forth. When I put the router on here, I'm going to use a half inch router bit. So I've made these devices right here that use a half inch dowel rod and it's sticking down an inch and a half below what will be the bottom of the router. I'm going to place one at the first fret and one at the 12th fret because after the first fret the neck goes up this way and at the heel back here it goes up too. So those are the last places I can get on this neck that will be straight. I put tape on the end of the dowel rod to protect the finish of the neck. So now when you rotate the neck, it'll be riding on these dowel rods. While rotating the neck and keeping it against the dowel rod that simulates the router bit, you'll want to take your sharpened pencil lead 
and put it in the hole that you've made. Push it against the puck or the blank cam and rotate while keeping that pin against the guitar neck. And do the same on the other end. Let's see how successful we were. That appears to be about the best I've done so far. I think we have a success. So there's the cams ready to cut out and be shaped. Before I put the cutout cam back on the end of the carriage here, let me give you a little demonstration how this works. I put the bearing back on this And I'm going to put the axis through there. Now you can see it rides on that bearing. I've put this back together and you might be able to see that I've got an issue. This part right here sticks out farther than the cam. So I will have to take my carriage and trim this part off. Back here on the this end, I'm fine. There will be no interference. Problem solved. So now, no matter where I am on this neck, on the straight portion, I measure down from the bottom of the router base, rotate that neck, and I always have an inch and a half. Move it up part way, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. Move it up again inch and a half inch and a half always an inch and a half to further demonstrate how these pucks get shaped i've made this jig this is straight runs on from the first fret to the 12th fret i've cut this out so it will clear the head and the wider parts and this is Got a pencil lead taped at this end, which is about an inch higher than the surface of the back of the neck. Now, if I move that around like here, you will get the shape of that puck. It's not perfect, but you get the idea. And you could hand trace that and smooth it up. I want to move it from one end to the other. This actually didn't turn out too bad at all. So here's the two profile jigs I've made, one for bass, one for guitar. The same router bass fits both, both boxes. The height of the side rails is six and a half inches. The dimensions of the end plates are the same. For different scale lengths you'll need to make a different carriage. This one's for 34 inch. This one for the guitar is for 25 and a half. If I do a Gibson one I will have to make a whole nother carriage. So hopefully I've given you enough detailed information on how this jig works and the theory behind it. So if you haven't already seen the videos of me using this jig to copy and make a new guitar neck, uh, then you need to go check those out and I will put links in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, and share it with your friends. Marvelous.